Hey guys, it's me, it's Zach. Uh, I just wanted to make this video just to get my thoughts out instead of just typing a bunch of messages all over the internet. I don't want to type all that much and you guys don't want to read that much, so a video is much better. So here we are. So the town hall just happened over the contract negotiations, 2024. Uh, we had the whole panel of uh, negotiators representing each of the different locals up there on stage. Matt Loeb himself direct, uh, addressing us, and they just went over all the terms that they got for us, all the, all the wins, which was a lot of like wage increases and improvements in quality of life things. Um, but, the, but the main issue is, and the, one that I'm, the reason I'm making this video is, uh, is about artificial intelligence, and you guys are probably sick of hearing about it. Um, I've made a bunch of videos about it. I made a I made a video around a year ago. I guess it was around the act the writer strikes. I realized something. If you are a filmmaker, if you are creative in the film industry whatsoever, if you're a writer, copywriter, actor, um, filmmaker, uh, camera operator, DP, editor, everything involved with production, you need to be concerned with AI now because AI will replace you tomorrow. Or the next day but it will replace you I realize that the issues that are affecting writers and artists around with in regards to AI they're eventually going to concern you too because as I said in that video you don't need a film crew if you don't have a film set if everything is done with artificial intelligence and it's virtual and it's a virtual set guys they don't need you you're out of a job and there's a lot more of you than there are of us artists and I think writers, but especially more, more of you than there are artists. So, so when our complaints fall on deaf ears, uh, I just really want you to understand that, uh, this is going to affect you because for, for example, so to be specific right now, there's basically not the protections for AI that we want in the contract we didn't get what like the writers got which was uh, language that said basically uh, no I AI can be used to do your job instead we get language like the producers can tell you which AI programs to use to do your job you have to tell the producers when you use AI to do your job but they don't have to tell you when AI was used to create an image that they're giving you that they want you to work off of they don't have to tell you that uh, and then there's like nothing in there about whether or not our own work can be trained into AI to, to create models that are going to um, eventually be used to create images that will replace our own images so that they don't have to hire us. And I'm realizing I'm doing something now that is one of my big complaints about all of these discussions, which is people just say AI. But the issue here is AI generated images and video. People want to say AI is a tool. We, AI is suddenly like in everything that we use. And sometimes it's actually pretty useful. Like I'm also a photographer and I use the AI blemish removal tool on photographs and you just have to click and the pimple's gone. It's amazing. Before that, you know, there's other tools that are stupid AI tools that did a bad job. So you have to go through this big process of like breaking it up into layers and doing dodge and burn and all this shit. But with an AI tool, I just have to click on it and AI works its magic and like imagines what it should look like without the, the pimple there and it does it. So to me, that is an AI tool. But AI generated images are different. They would be actually replacing the photograph that I'm working on and replacing me with some other image, some other photo that was a was cobbled together from a bunch of photographs out there in the training model to produce an image that nobody had to pay me for. So that's the issue that artists are having and, and people are thinking to themselves, you know, if they don't, if they haven't been following all of this, a lot of artists I know don't, don't even know, but they think, well, yeah, AI is actually useful. AI is the future. AI is in everything. We can't stop AI. AI is a tool. Um, we have to leave ourselves open to continue to use these new tools as they come out. So therefore, when we when we negotiate our contract, we have to make sure that we leave it open enough to not limit ourselves. Because the rest of the world is going to be using AI, right? But 
when it comes to AI generated images and video, that is literally helping to replace the artists who are in the same union as you. You are saying it's okay to replace us. And there's so few of us and you don't see a lot of us. And after all, we're just a bunch of artists that just draw pictures, right? We don't actually, we're not actually there on the set helping you make the movie. So who cares, right? Who cares? Well, uh, I, these days I think a lot about, uh, one of my, was it biology or anatomy, biology, biology teachers in, um, in community college. And she, she used to say, when in doubt, take it out. If you don't know what an organ does in a body, in the human body or in a specimen, uh, just take the organ out and whatever happens will be a clue that that's what the organ was doing, right? So let's just do a little thought experiment with the film industry and just when in doubt, take it out. Writers, take them out. What do you have left? Nobody, there's no story, there's no dialogue. People can't make a schedule because they don't know what the scenes are. They don't know what the scene needs. You can't get people to come together to tell a cohesive story. You need something on the page in order for people to make plans and decide to cast, uh, to make plans for shooting locations and props. and co You have to start with something, that outline written out on a page. You can have um, reality TV where there's no script, but people who work in the industry know that there's still a script. There's something. Uh, but um, other, if you don't have that, then it's like documentary, just like shoot whatever, edit it together, hope to get something, you know, but that's not what entertainment is. That's not what so much of entertainment is. It needs a script. So when in doubt, take it out, take out the script. And that's what you're left with. What I just described. Chaos. No story. No cohesive story. No lovable characters. No through lines. Uh, no, no plans. Nothing. Uh, so put that back in. Let's take something else out. Take out the camera. Now what do you have? Exactly. You don't have anything, do you? You don't have a movie without a camera. You got to get the picture, right? You have to bounce the photons off of objects to capture it on the sensor and then take those images and edit them into a moving picture story. You need the camera. Or so far you have. Um, so put the camera back in. Um, actually, no, but take the camera back out. So now we're left with nothing. We have a black screen. However, now let's use AI to create a scene in the digital realm, completely virtual. So now you have a whole virtual set laid out in front of you with virtual actors that were captured using uh, AI scanning technology. They're, they can instantly speak and say lines in the original voice of the actor without the actor having to, to actually record the lines because AI is able to get them to say basically anything you want them to say and with any kind of inflection. And not only that, but their mouths on these 3D models will move along with the dialogue and you can replace the language with any other language and it will instantly look like they're speaking that language and sound like they're speaking the language. And this technology exists. You can find it online if you search for it. So even though you took the camera out, surprise, surprise, you still have a movie, don't you? And if you don't have a set, then all of you guys don't have any jobs, do you? No, you don't. So put the camera back in. We're back to where we were. Take the actors out, obviously. Empty set. No story, no characters, nothing. You have to, like, do little puppets or something. Put the cameras, put the actors back in. We know we need them. You know, they know, they know we need them. They're very important. Um... However, they are now being undermined. They are now be 3D. Uh, they're getting 3D scanned. Their images, their faces taken, their voices taken and owned by studios to be used however they want without having to pay the actors. Uh, it's very bad. And that's why they were going on strike. That's why they were pushing for protections from AI because they understand how important it is. And not only that, they have their own union and the people who are at the head of that union have no choice but to listen to the people in their union because it, it is the union these people who are affected however artists illustrators uh costume designers set designers um storyboard artists etc anyone who's at, noticed the common word here design designing uh we are here in this iatsi with you and it's supposed to be a way for us all to be stronger together but in these situations it is it has weakened us. It has diluted uh, our needs, and we are not being heard. Um, so, 
let's take the artists out. Let's take the illustrators out and see what we get. Because, I mean, we're not there helping to film the movie, so what does it matter, right? Well, oh, uh, well, I was going to say let's include VFX artists um, and compositors and whatnot, but we'll, let's wait a little minute. Let's just do illustrators, costume designers, set designers, storyboard artists. Uh, so now those elaborate, beautiful costumes that were being worn by those characters in that movie that you love, those don't, those don't exist. Those, they had to design those costumes first using graphic software to pick, to figure out what they were going to make. That's designing. That's visual designing that take that out. So those costumes don't exist. The, the cool car, the vehicle, the spaceship that exists, that you love, the design you love, you have a model of it in your, in your room. Uh, you know, that's gone because that had to be designed by a concept artist. So really anything that had to get designed beforehand by a person so that they could go on and make it, fabricate it so that they could put it on a set, bounce light off of it into a camera and record it. That all had to be designed by an artist, illustrator, designer, someone who uses their visual skills to make a 2D object or a 3D object. So all of that design work disappears and you might say well no zach just because someone didn't draw it up and design it beforehand doesn't mean that it doesn't exist there are still things out there that we can film okay yeah sure there are things that exist that you can film but not that you designed you know to to specifically be a part of your movie and your story and be these iconic uh vehicles or character designs or set designs that you know stick in your mind um you know you could there's plenty of cars. There's plenty of cars to shoot. You don't need to design. You can shoot so many movies you don't need, uh, and you don't need to design anything. You just shoot what's there. But a lot of what we love is very detailed, very specific, very unique, and a person designed that from the beginning. An artist, uh, designer, came up with it, and they had to because the studio ultimately wants to own that, right? Uh, the Back to the Future car, for example, that the look of it, you know, it's 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 called IP, intellectual property. If someone else tried to do a movie and put that car into it, you know, they're going to run into legal trouble. If somebody else wanted to dress up a character like Marty McFly and do it, you know, and call him Marty McFly, you know, they run into issues. But his iconic costume that you're thinking of right now, someone designed that. And um, all that design work is going to go away in our thought experiment. You got to take it out. Um. Now you might say, oh, well, no, you can actually do like a, you can do a, um, what's it called? Um, like a spoof, you know, there, there's certain rules, you know, that you can get away with that, but you, you know what I'm trying to say anyway. So, so in this thought experiment, um, we've taken out all illustration, everything that's contributed by artists and you're left with nothing but the most boring stuff, imaginable stuff you see every day that requires no imagination and hardly any sophisticated planning. Uh, those really big movies you love, you know, the comic book movies that were big for a while, you know, and the sci-fi movies and the fantasy movies where they shoot a lot of green screen and a lot of VFX and a lot of times the camera's pointed at things and there's nothing there, like Jurassic Park. The camera was pointed at fo empty forests for a large part of that. And they had to put in the VFX dinosaurs later, right? Well, that's possible, made possible because of storyboards. An artist pre was able to see in their head what each shot should look like to tell the story of the movie, working along with the director who's telling, explaining to them what the shots you know should be or taking their advice. They work together. They're collaborating. Um, and then they take those storyboards, and then they can see, all right, well, if we shoot a shot right here of a dinosaur running through the woods, then we can cut to this girl's face reacting and it's, and it's going to tell a story. So then they take those storyboards and then they know, okay, so then we need to film this shot of these empty of nothing but trees so that we could put a VFX dinosaur in there running towards the camera later and then cut to the girl's face. A lot of these big movies that we love, they cut so fast and there's so many little pieces that there's absolutely no way you could do it without storyboards. Okay. I know they try and they, they have to settle with what they get, which is far less than what they could accomplish and for far less money than if they used storyboards. Storyboards are a secret ingredient for a lot of your favorite movies. Trust me, look it up, look into it. So we've taken storyboards out 
illustration out so you don't get any complicated movies you don't get any fancy cool designs any unique designs any original ip because it all had to be designed beforehand they have to see what the design is for a, like a, a vehicle or something and then run it through legal to decide if it's already been done or if it's unique enough that they can cop that they can uh you know uh copyright it or trademark it or something uh so that they can own it and make money off of it they all you have to have to see it first we have to draw it first the concept artists you know um, but that's gone because we took the artists out, right? So, yeah, people still, you know, can make movies, but they're not going to be making the movies that we love today. They'll be doing rom-coms, people talking in rooms and stuff. And But then if those rooms had to get built, if those sets had to be built, then you still need a, a, set, a set designer to, to design that set that they have to build. So you have to go shoot in a real house. You see where I'm going? So even though we're not there with you, you know, we're still a part of this process. And um, so thought experiment over for now. Um, so we're still part of this process with you guys. And we don't feel like we're being represented. And, you know, we need your support. You need to help them understand them being leadership negotiators, and maybe the studios, uh, that we deserve a lot of the same protections that the writers and the actors got. So we need your help. So I'm new to the union and I want to believe that the union is something positive, something great, something powerful, something that's looking out for its members. I don't have any interest in being in a fake union. I don't know about you guys. I, and I know a lot of the, the, the artists who have been in the union for a long time, they have a lot invested in it. They have years and years and years. They've, they've reached their, their requirements to qualify for health insurance and for pension. And they've been racking up these pension years that they need and they get vested and et cetera, et cetera. So they've got a lot of investment in what's been going on. And, you know, they just wanted to stay together just a little bit longer so that, you know, they can reach retirement age and check out. People like me, I still have another 20 years in my career, like solid 20 years. Uh, definitely if I hope to retire with storyboarding. But at the most, you know, at the very least, a very intense 10 years, 15 years, you know, up to 20, maybe more. Point being, I have more to lose now by the union not being what it claims to be going into the future over the next 20 years. I have more to lose by investing in that vision that doesn't exist than people who have already invested years in the past who just need it to hold out just a little bit longer. Do you know what I'm saying? So, and I know it's going to sound, oh, it sounds like you're anti-union, Zach. Sounds like you're making waves and pissing off the wrong people. Well, I thought the union was supposed to be its members, and I'm a member now. My friends are members. I, these other artists who are complaining about these AI, uh, you know, about these AI terms in the contract, they're, it's their union as well. It's not just me, it's them. Um, you know, like if the union came in and kicked my dog, I'm going to say something. I'm like, Hey, you can't kick my dog. That doesn't make me a negative person. It doesn't make me overly critical. It's just me saying, Hey, don't kick my dog. Well, right now with this contract, you know, you're kicking my dog and I'm telling you, don't kick my dog. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to, I'm going to predict what the, oh, by the way, so What's interesting about business people is that they're very predictable. Business is extremely predictable. If it's going to make more money and if it's like technically legal or quasi legal or even a little illegal, if someone can make more money doing something a certain way, they're going to do it. Business is extremely predictable. I've been able to, you know, a lot of predictions that I've made over the last year, year and a half have come true. So let's just look at what life is going to be like once this, if this contract passes, how it is. Um, well, first of all, AI is technically going to be officially recognized and allowable in our workflows in the film industry. So artists like myself are already going to, we're, we're going to be encouraged to learn and train on how to use AI, not just AI tools, but AI generating, uh, AI to generate images, which is what I'm supposed to do, but now the computer's doing it, but I'm going to have to learn how to work, work with that technology. And by the way, I'm not somebody who shies away from new technology. I know some of the older guys, they don't want to learn new drawing programs because drawing programs come out all the time. You know, I've, we've all been around those people who are just don't seem like they want to learn anything. They, they think the world has to accommodate them. You know, they're set in their ways. I'm not one of those people. I'm okay to learn new technology. But 
in fact, I, I understand technology so well that I can see the divide between a tool and something that's actually replacing me and doing something that I should be doing. It is more clear to me because I understand more than people who claim that I don't understand. Does that make sense? So this is what the future is. This is, this is our new normal. So I'm learning AI. I'm using AI in my workflow. Uh, it's pulling images from um, other artists who worked for the company, for the studio, uh, recombining their images that they already they created. And, and I can use it in my workflow. I can do a quick sketch and it'll bring it up to something that looks like presentable quality. Um, I could even like type in whole sequences and the computer will be able to generate storyboards that will roughly resemble the sequences that I described. Um, you know, I could do cost, the, the costume designers uh, or the concept artists can type in, you know, something, some description of a spaceship or something, and it'll pull from all these images that exist and come up with something that's supposed to be unique, but it's derivative. And, uh, and then, you know, we have to pass those designs off to the producers and then they, they come back with notes and then we, we, we draw and then we draw over those designs and try to make them uh, copyrightable, you know, different enough from what the AI spit out to be unique and copyrightable. Um, and then, you know, and then, but this is the thing, once they go, uh, even though AI can't be copyrighted, the work from AI can't be copyrighted once it's filmed somebody pointed out that it becomes a transformative work and that itself can actually be copyrighted. So something to think about there. But anyway, um, and by the way, this is, I'm even, I'm assuming too much to assume that me as a union worker is even doing this work. It's probably being song, subcontracted out to one of these companies, one of these agencies who frankly gives zero shits about you, me, anyone here in LA, anyone in IATSE or, or the, the entire country it gives zero shits about any of us. Okay. The, they, those agencies, those studios, those little studios, they exist for themselves. They're in business for themselves. Okay. Give zero shits about you. So this work is probably being subcontracted out to them. They're charging a lot of money, but they're only paying their AI prompters a very low, amount, low amount of money to put out a tremendous amount of work that's replacing all of our work our illustrators work. Um, and uh yeah we're we have to we artists have to learn how to use this unethical software that is a taking images that we never gave them permission to use in this way and b um it's actually reducing the amount of time that uh we're employed the number of people it's employed it's replacing the artists and we are now just cleaning up after ai so also in this future uh, producers, they, they need to be told when we use AI, but if they give us images from somewhere, they don't have to tell us artists that it's an AI image that we're working off of. And what I'm really concerned about is that, uh, in this future that we're imagining, um, anyone's going to be able to create illustrations and storyboards and concept art and this and that, and it's PAs, you know, everything from anywhere. And I know some people hear that and they say, oh, actually, that sounds remarkable. Anybody can make art. Anyone can make storyboards. That is what a gift. Uh, and that sounds great, um, except that that's all possible because it's taking work that uh, was not ever intended for that purpose and being used against the artists who created it in order to replace them. That ability only exists because it is essentially stealing from artists. It is stealing. Uh, that's, that's why this whole thing doesn't make sense. It's like, how can you have infinite art at such a low price or for free? How can it possibly be that you can generate a video out of nothing? How is it even possible? It's not possible. The only way it's possible is that you're not paying for it it's stealing how do you get all this art for free you don't pay for it that's how it's possible now on that subject let's talk about this paying for it and you're like well if the company owns it they own the rights to it they can use it how they want and this is an argument that i made like a year ago i saw this coming a mile away so the argument is, well, if the company owns the image, then they can use it in any way they want, including the train AI models. 
something, you know, to, to gen generate these AI images. So that should be ethical, right? That's legal. That's allowed. They should be able to do it. Uh, it might be legal right now, but it's not ethical. Here's an example. Uh, there's a website for photography. Uh, I'm not going to name it, but there's a website where a, a lot of photographers used to be able to make money by uploading their images to this website. They'd have a contract signed beforehand. They get accepted so that they have the ability to upload their photographs to this website. And the way it works is anytime an outside uh, publisher, buyer, whatever, new source, they want to license that image to use it in, in an article or to print it somewhere, then they have to pay, a, they, they find it online, they search for it, you know, they type in dog with kite or something and they find the image, oh, I like that, and they, they, they pay for it. Some of the money goes to the website, some of the money goes to the photographer. Everyone wins. So this website, uh, they now have this license to use, it's part of their conditions that all these images that these photographers upload to the website, that part of it is that they're, they have to agree to allow the website to train an AI model on their photograph. So now it's legal for this website to create AI images from photographs that people, photographers have uploaded, hoping to get paid. And this is where it gets really bad. When you go to the website, you have a choice. Do I want to find a photograph to license and pay money for? Or do I want to choose to have an AI image generator take all the photographs on the website and generate something that's unique and pay a little less? Uh, and I don't have to pay out any kind of special fees or anything to a photographer. And not only that, but the website doesn't have to pay the photographer either because it's some other image that no one made. The AI made it even though it's made from all of those other images from photographers. So photographers are losing out on that money. So this website that's supposed to be partnering with the photographers is at the same time undermining them and keeping money for themselves. Do you see what I'm saying? So I, I hope you can see the, the, the ethical, um, you know, parallels here between that and what we're discussing in the film industry, just because something is legally allowed, you know, it doesn't make it ethical. You know, laws have to change. People, there's a lot of people saying laws are going to change in the other direction, and then suddenly a, whatever AI can produce can be, uh, you know, copyrightable. And then, you know, if that day ever comes, then um, no one will be able to make a living as an artist anymore. They really won't. You know, that's how this whole system is supposed to work. Like with the, with the actors, like they own their face, they own their voice, that's theirs. That's their tool. They, you know, that's what's unique about them, what they offer the world. They can use that to their benefit. People can pay them to use it. Artists, when we create images, when we, writers, when, we, when they come up with original ideas and they put it down on paper, like uh, that, we're supposed to be able to profit from that. If we can't, if people can just take whatever we make, put it into an AI and then keep whatever comes out the other end, then there's no way for us to make money on the, the, the front side of it to generate this content. And, you know, if you're not an artist, if you, if you're not someone who creates things for a living, you know, writer or any a musician or anything, then this, you know, you, you probably, you might not really care in the end. You might not. I might've just said all these things and you still don't care. Well, I'm just going to reiterate what I said a year ago. Uh, it's going to catch up to you and it's going to affect you. And let me tell you this, and this is, I'm going to go ahead and end with this. Okay. Um, I'm trying to show you how we have mutual interests here and how you supporting us will be helping you. I'm trying to show you that. Now, if you refuse that, if you don't listen to us and you let us fall victim to AI, then me and the other artists, all these very creative and talented individuals, we will learn how to use AI, some of us, and then we will be able to use that to create whole video projects that don't need any of you. How does that sound? You know, the studios, maybe that's what some of them want. There's small companies out there right now, and that's their whole business model right now, is they're trying to get to the point where they can put out a, pump out a product based on stolen video and images, you know, ethically or unethically, like we've talked about before. Uh, and sell that direct to clients. Product, 
with no workers, no contribution, uh, not sourcing things from the real world, something from nothing and making money off of it. That's the dream. That's the business grifter fucking dream. Some companies, that's their whole thing right now. They're out there. This contract will allow them to come in and start doing work on your favorite movies and television shows. And again, I'm going to say it. If you let the artists go out of work because of this, if you don't help us protect ourselves, we're going to learn it. We're going to use it. And uh, we can make anything that you can do in the virtual world. Let's just put it that way. Okay? We need your help. We don't want in-person live filmmaking to go away. We don't want actual original art to go away. We want actors to keep their face, keep their voices, keep their identity, and profit from it and make a living. A lot of audience members, whether they realize it or not, they also want these things. Some of them really know that they don't want AI entertainment, like fully AI entertainment. And again, AI can be a tool. AI can can come in and provide shortcuts and make some small tasks easier. But that's only certain uses of AI. Other parts of AI are worker, laborer, talent replacement tools, or yeah, tools for replacement. Um, but they're not the same as an AI tool, okay? Let's just be clear about that. I, I'm starting to repeat myself. I think you know what I'm trying to say. These are just some of my thoughts. Um, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. There's so much more I have to say. There's so much to be said about this topic. Um, vote no. Send them back to negotiate. Have them put into the contract a lot of the wording that the Writers uh, Guild got. And... Um, Voting no is not a vote for a strike. Voting no says go back and negotiate. And if the studios don't want to negotiate, uh, it's on them. Okay? Because then they leave us no option but to you know what. And to remind them that so much of what they do is still based in this physical world that requires you. Again, keeping in mind that if things go into the virtual world... Um, unguarded uh, we can do that too artists can do that too but it won't need you it could, it could use us but it, it's not going to need you Just I want you to understand that so do this for us but also do it for yourselves I mean and now let's quickly consider the fact you know the possibility that like all of this is unnecessary all of this drama is unnecessary AI was never going to take anyone's job AI we're all we were all going to be perfectly safe all along and this has just been costing us needless time and energy and effort and drama and lost money you know that's what a lot of people are saying uh well uh we have been losing jobs artists have been losing jobs work has been getting outsourced uh you have seen production leaving LA or and leaving the uh, IOTC jurisdiction to other markets. Uh, so that's already a reality. So that's not, doesn't require any part of the imagination and that's not up for debate. That's, that's our reality right now. Um, but then let's consider the rest of that besides that reality. You know, what if all this was for nothing? Well, if it was all for nothing, then why can't we get it into the contract? Why is it so hard? They should just be able to just sign it over, you know, Someone, uh, a friend of mine taught me that if somebody doesn't want to give you something for free, it's because it's a value to them or they, you know, they think it's a value to you and, you know, uh, they think it's, so then they think it's worth money to them. Well, bottom line is however you spin it, if it was a non-issue, then it would literally be a non-issue and they will just go back to the negotiating table, put in the language and be done with it. Okay. So. If people want to say it's not an issue, then fine. Then they should have no issue signing it over. And if they have an issue signing it over, well, then you fucking know then, don't you? Well, thank you for listening. Thanks.